Now I want to discuss some of the non-infectious corneal ulcers. The first is the neuroparalytic keratitis. We all know that the cornea receives sensation from the trigeminal nerve. If there is injury to the nerve supply, the sensory nerve supply to the cornea, this will result of a stoppage of the exoplasmic transport. Exoplasmic transport is a special materials passing along the nerve to reach to the terminal organ. This material is essential for the integrity of the tissues and the normal function of the terminal organ. So, if the trigeminal ganglion is destroyed as in treatment of trigeminal neuralgia when alcohol is injected to destroy the ganglion, or another example after herpes simplex and herpes zoster keratitis they leave the cornea with less sensation or no sensation at all such eyes are liable to develop such an ulcer as you notice that the ulcer is in the center this is the forest away from the limbus where some nutrition can percolate so it's away from nutrition and there is no pain there is no photophobia the eye looks quiet because there is no sensation when we examine such an ulcer we notice that the epithelium is heaped up at the edge of the ulcer cells cannot slide to cover the bed of the ulcer because the basement membrane of the epithelium is not there T to treat such a condition we improve the environment for that cornea by adding wetting agent. We can do torsorophy to low to minimize the size of the palpebral fissure to protect the cornea from the external environment like winds and dust. Then we can help by using amniotic membrane. I'm going to explain this in a minute. Atropine is not essential as there is no pain. We just give antibiotics to avoid secondary infection. Now, amniotic membrane transplantation is important to, def to treat conditions like neuroparalytic ulcers. Also, it can be used in conditions like dysmetocele or small perforation of the cornea less than 3 millimeters. Amniotic membrane is suture to the site or the whole cornea and the amniotic membrane is obtained from elective caesarean section mother should be negative for hepatitis syphilis and AIDS the amniotic membrane is prepared and is ready to use when needed before using it's kept in some fluids for some time then it is ready to be suture the amniotic membrane is formed of one layer of epithelium attached to a basement membrane and a vascular matrix. It can be used for treatment of neurotrophic ulcers where the membrane is suture to the surface, while in cases of dysmetocele and perforation, multiple pieces of the membrane are used to fill the defect then a biological glue is added then the membrane is suture to the surface what is the function of the amniotic membrane the cells of the amniotic membrane the epithelial cells secrete growth factor that will help healing then the basement membrane of the amniotic membrane helps migration of the cells on it so it can cover the area and also it helps attachment of these cells so this is the value of the amniotic membrane the second example is keratitis with lagophthalmos or exposure keratitis this is a case of extropion of the lower lid the patient cannot close the eye perfectly this is a facial palsy the orbicularis is not functioning in such conditions the eye is exposed to the external atmosphere there is no 
blinking enough so the cornea is dry and not healthy there is a phenomena called Bell's phenomena you can see it when we sleep or when the, uh, the lids are forcibly closed it's an upward rotation of the globe with lid closure a person with a goose Bell's phenomena the cornea is not exposed but if there is lag of thermos and the Bell's phenomena is poor or weak then the lower part of the cornea will be exposed and dryness will be here an ulcer will occur with all the characteristics of the ulcer the typical thing is that this ulcer has a straight upper border where the upper lid is protecting the upper part of the cornea the treatment is as usual and also we need to treat the cause and we need to treat the exposure by doing tarsal a second type is keratomalacia it appears in children with multiple deficiencies with poor nutrition with bad general condition it's a case with bilateral corneal meltings with minimal inflammatory response so there is massive ulcers both sides with necrosis and melting of the cornea it's very difficult to treat the idea is to improve the general condition and give the uh, usual treatment of corneal ulcers Morin's ulcer or chronic serpiginous ulcer is another type of ulcer it usually appears in old age but sometimes appear in young age as a cause of ancient as a reason of ancient antibody reaction this ulcer starts in the periphery gradually it creeps circumferentially and to the center the cornea is melting and is eating up the bed of the ulcer is, is vascularized this can get deep and deep and deep till there is perforation in the old age it's a degenerative condition but in the young and the forties it's an ancient antibody reaction occurring in this type in this site the treatment is as usual and if there is a risk of perforation then a lamellar keratoplasty a partial keratoplasty is applied to the area of ulceration now I come to the last point it's penis penis is not an ulcer penis it's vascularization superficial vascularization and cellular infiltration of the cornea it can be seen in cases of trachoma in the upper part of the cornea in cases of ancient antibody reaction in flectinular conjunctivitis in any location of the cornea or degenerative penis it's a circumferential penis in cases of prolonged corneal edema secondary to chronic aridocyclitis or absolute glaucoma thank you